Fear and panic take over the White House over the weekend. There is reports coming out that officials within the administration not only confuse, but completely scared. Do you know what caused this? It's actually a story that's been developing for some time, but it appears now it is exploding or imploding right before our very eyes and it directly affects the future of the biden administration that's the story i bring you here in just one minute Before we go any further, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, take just a few minutes to do that. Can't tell you how much it means to me. I have one means of supporting the broadcast, either here where you're watching this or at, and I'd love you to go to restrictedrepublic.com. Declare your independence from mainstream media today. Lisa Haven and I work there day and night to bring you all the stories that you can't find anywhere else, and for very good reason. As we get closer to this election, it will become more and more apparent to you exactly why we created an independent news platform. Right now, restrictedrepublic.com. Discount code independence at monthly checkout. We'll get you $4 a month each month for two years. Discount code independence at monthly checkout. Get there today, not tomorrow. RestrictedRepublic.com. And now let's get back to this broadcast. So if you only listen to the sound of your own voice and only took advice from that person you see in the mirror, how successful in life would you have been? It should be a fairly easy question with no Bible, no counseling, no family guidance, no word from friends talking you off the ledge about that bad decision you're about to make, and no one else giving you a dissenting opinion. You would be living in your own echo chamber. Now, that's exactly where the Biden administration now exists. And that's extremely dangerous in business, in life, in politics. So why are they doing it? Why are the likes of Ron Klain continuing to allow Biden to live in that echo chamber? Are they truly that disconnected? Senior Democrats now, including President Biden's own aides, are increasingly skeptical. I'm amazed it took this long. About his election strategy for November. After spending $24 million in the last ad campaign that failed, you can start to understand why. But I digress for a moment, which... Hinges on voters' concerns surrounding January 6th. Not really. They just always want to keep that dangled in front of you like the proverbial carrot. Political unrest, Democratic integrity, and Donald Trump's character. To add insult to injury, however, a new Rasmussen poll just came out. I'm hoping you saw this poll. I'm going to get over to it very quickly. Because I don't think this man has seen the poll. Or if he has, he's just ignoring it. Mike Donilon, familiar with who he is? He's at the center of this horrible Biden strategy. Ron Klain is right there arm in arm with them, and they are truly giving Biden some really bad advice. But go ahead, boys. Continue on, please. We don't want anybody to really realize what's happening, but this doesn't mean you shouldn't get to the polls. You must mention to someone every day, recommend to them who your candidate is. I know who the majority of you are voting for. And if Donald Trump loses support or people think this is a runaway, that could be catastrophic. So don't let that happen. But nonetheless, this Rasmussen poll came out. And within it, it states, in a two-way presidential election matchup with Biden, former President Donald Trump would get 49 to Biden's 40 percent. That is a catastrophic statistic for Biden to have to read. Now, if you put a third party in, the split goes 46 Trump to 36 Biden. That turns the disaster into an absolute train wreck. Not since if we go all the way down or let's start at the bottom and move our way back up. When has somebody had double digit margin of victory the last one ronald reagan ronald reagan that's how far back in history we have to go so why are the viewpoints of Klein and donnellan keeping biden in the echo chamber 
It's isolating him, not only from, well, reality, but his own party, where polls have consistently shown that Biden either is tied or trailing opponents, but they don't want him to see that. No matter how bad or dire these polls continue to get, and Axios calls it all out. Again, not double digits since Reagan versus Mondale has anyone see such devastating numbers. Several polls indicate, of course, that voters are concerned about democracy, the term I hate to use. It should be they're concerned about the great republic of the United States of America. Their primary worries revolve around inflation and economy, and rightfully they should, and border security. But Depending on who's writing the article, sometimes they leave that talking point to the wayside. Moreover, Biden's support among crucial Democratic constituents, blacks, Latinos, young adults, and union members is slipping. It's fading away. You watch CNN interviews, people are shocked. How is this happening? Everybody's waking up. When you give us continual talking points that result in nothing except hemorrhaging cash from my wallet, you're going to have an issue when you come up to re-election. And that's what's happening. The only people he seems to be resonating with is older voters right now. Ron Klain, Biden's former chief of staff and longtime associate of the Netherlands, continues to express confidence in Donald's approach to the entire thing. In Mike, I trust, he states. Ron Klain sits in the background the entire time. He's running everything, orchestrating everything for Biden. But he has orchestrated it completely in a horrible direction for the Biden campaign. It's actually a beautiful thing, at least for us to watch. And Axios takes full aim and fires back in their article titled, Top Dem Biden Has Losing Strategy. However, there's growing unease among many Democrat strategists observing from outside the echo chamber, outside the inner circle. One remark to Axios in this article It's unclear whether the president and his core team grasp the gravity of the current situation or even have plans to address it. That is concerning. And it doesn't appear money's fixing it either. Bad policy is striking down this administration, but that doesn't mean out of desperation they will write more bad policy. Sources close to the president reveal concerns about dissenting opinions being stifled with Biden's loyal cadre of aides. Don't you dare mention you don't believe in what Biden's doing in front of Klain. It appears that's a one-way ticket directly out of the inner circle. And this group that just wants to consume power at all costs will try never to poke the bear. Known for their tight-knit loyalty to the president, they allow no outside opinion. They're living in that echo chamber I started out with, which is a very dangerous place to be. Despite concerns... Donald, in a seasoned Democratic operative, remains optimistic in private conversations. I don't know how anyone could be optimistic, but it appears he is. Assuring others that voters will make the right choice by supporting democracy and rejecting Trump in November. He frequently asserts Joe Biden is a great president and great presidents get reelected. Obviously, there is one thing he hasn't researched. A track record, a success rate, an economic number. Nah. Just ignore all that. With new rumors now swirling about the freeze-ups, as they so adequately call them, and rumors as to what condition can cause that, did you read the articles? Some saying it's reminiscent of signs of Parkinson's. That's of great concern. His disappearance from virtual and Biden disappearing from virtually any speaking engagements and a debate that could spell the end of the campaign with one senior moment, one wrong senior moment caught on camera. And trust me, the mainstream media is trying to spin it just by stating that if he simply shows up, it's a victory. How ridiculous of a thought process is that? A statement is that. But don't worry. Biden, Donald and Klain, they don't care. They're going to take one huge, heaping spoonful of reality check soon if they don't change their direction, but most of us don't want them to because what they're doing wrong right right now is absolutely wonderful. Responding to inquiries, Biden advisors emphasize, those speculating have not heard from Mike or any of the team about the president's comprehensive case for re-election. 
Donilon elaborates on his perspective earlier this year, drawing parallels between the significance of January 6th and 9-11 in shaping electoral outcomes. He remarked to the New Yorker in this article, the Democratic Party didn't want to believe it was a 9-11 election. I would never be a part of a presidential campaign that didn't figure out with clarity what it wanted to say and stick to it. So it appears the only track he'll stay on is the one he's currently on moving straight forward from disaster to an absolute train wreck. Looking ahead to Election Day, Donilon predicts a heightened focus on democracy, envisioning January 6th as a pivotal image in voters' mind. Now we see why we see it so much. Now we see why they can't let it go, because they can't accept that the voters aren't accepting it. It's not resonating. But go ahead, boys, continue forward. Biden's inner circle operates cohesively, yet jokingly referred to an unofficial no new friends rule. If you're not in a circle, you're not about to enter it. I don't care who you are. If you're not resonating, only our talking point, you might as well stay on the outside looking in. Despite a substantial early start and significant spending advantage, Biden's campaign has struggled to improve any of Biden's approval rating. No matter how much they spend, trying to point the finger at the blame of what they call the criminal Donald J. Trump. And you see it ad after ad, image after image. Oh, he only cares about himself, the man who has gone through as much persecution as he has. But this ad didn't work. It didn't change Biden's ratings at all. And yet Klain and Donilon won't change theirs. So many Democrats, including some in the administration, say the Biden team view of itself is distorted. Biden won the 2020 Democratic primary largely because the party consolidated to stop Bernie Sanders and picked a candidate who polls showed as the most competitive. Even with a once in a century pandemic, Biden barely beat Trump by less than 45,000 votes across three states. Biden didn't win. Trump lost. Now, both candidates focus strongly on Pennsylvania. A win for Trump there will all but seal the election. Howard Wolfson, a longtime Democratic strategist, cautioned, if the election were today, we would lose. It's a strong statement. He underscored the high stakes of the upcoming debates and reiterated the campaign's focus on voter engagement and strategy. In summary and in closing, No matter how much we try, let me move this to that screen. No matter how much we try to emphasize this, while moral, while morale and management within the Biden campaign has seen some improvements as it draws closer to the election, concerns persist among many top Democrats about the overarching, non changing narrative that has resulted in no uptick in polling whatsoever, only decline. And these strategic decisions guided by the campaign, particularly as they reflect on past successes and failures, but the only problem with that statement is there's very little success, but mass amounts of failure. Now, what say you? No matter how they try to spin it, I don't think they're ever going to, I know, not to be cute, but win it. At this point, the margins just spreading open too much against Biden. I know there's many things they could try. What's your thoughts on this? My opinion is, let these guys keep going down the same train track because like I put in the title, it moves them from disaster to an absolute devastating outcome to the election as fear strikes the inner circles of the Democrat Party. But the White House isn't listening. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.